Let me now take you briefly into the methodology. I will first deal with the summary and then give you some, some, some specific uh, details. Uh, Afrobarometer follows a very rigorous research protocols that are honed over the last 20 years. As the heart of the methodology are, number one, nationally representative sample of adult citizens. Adult citizens, women, citizens who are 18 years and above. The key word here is nationally representative sample. What does that mean? It means, one, all respondents are randomly selected. Two, sample is distributed across nine regional states, two city administrations, Tredawa and Addis Ababa, and further disaggregated by urban and rural areas in proportion to the share in the national population. The key word again is in proportion to their share in the national population. Third, every adult citizen has an equal chance of being selected. Afrobarometer uses conducts Afrobarometer conducts face-to-face -face interviews in the language of the respondent's choice. Afrobarometer uses standard questionnaire that allows comparison across countries and over time. The sample, the sample size in Ethiopia of 2,400 adult citizens is expected to yield, uh, to yield a margin of error of plus or minus two percentage points at 95% confidence interval. Field work for round eight in Ethiopia was conducted between December 27, 2019 and uh, 26th of January 2020. Had it not been for a COVID, this relays would have taken place much earlier than today. Let me now discuss the sample in terms of design and selection. The sample. Afrobiometer uses clustered, stratified, multi-stage probability sample design. The key word here is probability sample design. What does that mean? It means respondents are not selected purposefully, but through a random process. I repeat it, through a random process. The sample is designed as representative of cross-section of all citizens of voting age. Representative of cross-section of all citizens of voting age. The key word here is cross-section of all citizens. What does that mean? It means a diverse sample involving one, urban and rural residents, two, male and female, three, the young and the old, four, the illiterate and the elite, five, people of all faiths, six, people of all cultures. So much is the diversity of the Afrobarometer sample. How do we achieve this then? We achieve this, one, by applying random selection method at every stage of sampling. Two, by strictly applying sampling, sampling with probability proportional to population size. That is a very important word. Design in terms of cluster, cluster design. We've got a cluster design. Cluster design is about how we eventually reach out our respondents. The AVE protocol dictates that we do eight interviews per cluster, per, per enumeration area, with a sample of 2,400 that translates into 300 clusters. With this design, with this design, AVE, AVE follows the best ratio statistical science has ever recommended. The sample size is determined at plus or minus 2% margin of error at 95% confidence intervals. I will explain this later on. But there is this perennial question, a question that is oftentimes asked, 
when a sample survey of this type is and its results are presented or announced, the question goes, can we really, can we really say about the attitudes of millions of adult Ethiopians with a sample of just 2,400 people? The answer is a resounding yes, and I will explain why. I will explain this in terms of certain concepts. The first is population parameter. By that we mean attitudes of millions of adults on a certain issue, say it could be federalism. For example, a given percentage of adults who support or reject federalism. Do we know this number? We don't. The population parameter is mostly unknown in most cases, unless census is taken or the entire population is surveyed. Taking a, sample, taking a census is impractical for studies of this type. So, in this case, inverse, inference about population should be therefore made from a sample. But every sample contains some error, regardless of their size. Whether the sample is 2,400, whether the sample is 24,000, whether the sample is 240,000, or even 2.4 million, there is always an error, a sampling error. Why? Because we are studying a portion of the population, not the entire population. So that means the precision of any survey is quite often compromised because of sampling error. Survey, survey estimates are usually different from population parameters. This has got an implication for a design issue, which is the, the consideration is therefore how close should our survey estimates be the sample statistics compared to the population. The answer lies in the size of margin of error we are ready to accept. I will explain this in terms of two illustrations. The first one is the table you are uh, having a look at. As you can see, every sample size has got its own margin of error. That's a sampling error. The more we reduce the margin of error as we go down here, the larger the sample size, and hence the better the precision of the estimates. So we might think that by increasing the sample, we can reduce the sampling error to zero. But the relationship between sample size and sampling error is exponential rather than, rather than uh, linear. For instance, if we cut if we, cut, if we cut the error by half from 3.2 in here down to 1.6, we need four times as much of the sample as this one, from 1,000 to 4,000. Imagine the cost. Similarly, to cut the margin of error by a factor of five, say from 7.1 down to 1.4, the sample size moves from 200 to 5,000. Imagine the cost again. What I have said is only one aspect of the story though. We again find that as the sample increases, you can see from this diagram, as the sample increases, the horizontal line, the margin of error decreases. But there is a diminishing return from taking larger samples and larger samples, as we can see as you can see from the from the graph. The decision concerning sample size is therefore a trade-off among these factors. Oh, sorry. That said, what is the level of precision cho chosen by the Afrobarometer Afro then? The precision accepted, accepted by the Afrobarometer is plus or two minus margin of error at 95% confidence interval for a sample of 2,400. What does this exactly mean? It means if a sample survey, for example, shows that 40% of adult Ethiopians reject federalism, given the margin of error, approximately 40 plus minus two adults are likely to reject 
federalism at 95% of, of the time. In other words, if we take the sample of 2,400, 100 times, there is 95 probability that the results will be within the range of 40% plus or minus 2. The story taken together is that sample size is a measure of precision of the survey estimates, how close our survey estimates are to the population, and should not be oftentimes confused with representativeness, which is the next topic. How were the samples then selected? This is an interesting uh, part of the presentation. The sample was selected in multiple stages. Multiple stages. At first stage, there was a selection of rural and urban clusters or enumerations. For this, the data available, the sampling frame, sampling frame is a complete list, uh, available at the Central Statistics Agency has been accessed. The sampling frame has been sorted out by rural and urban locations in nine regions and two city administrations. Out of them, at first stage, 300 uh, enumeration areas have been randomly selected. At first stage, it has been randomly selected. Once the enumeration areas or the clusters are uh, selected, the, uh, the second stage was the second stage involved selection of households using a random work pattern. The keyword is random on a digital map provided by the Central Statistics Agency, and then I will explain this. Yeah, this is a typical digital map of a cluster. At the second, we use it for a second stage selection, that is the selection of households. As you can see at the center, the center is the, start, is the sampling starting point. From that, our enumerators go into four different directions following a given standard uh, uh, interval. Once the uh, household is selected, we are finally at the gate of our respondents, men and women respondents. Our interviewers, our interviewers do a list of men and female members of the households once they are there. A, a grid type roster is used to, 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 lead, to list the eligible members. A tablet program, a computer program, then randomly draws who would be the respondent. To, to follow the stratification, if a man is selected in the first household, a female is selected in the next household, and, and so forth. In that way, the Afrobarometer sample offers estimates from a representative sample. Why? Because it qualifies the three measures of a representative sample. One, the characteristics of the population is reflected in the sample. Urban and rural area, in Rhine regions, and two city administrations, male and female, adults of all, all, of, of all age group, people of all phases and cultures. Two, the sample has been randomly selected at every stage of the sampling from stage one to stage three. Three, every adult has an equal and known chance, for that matter, calculable and non-zero chance of being selected. Now let's see the sample, the distribution of the sample. This is the, 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 you can see from the map, the sample falls in every part of the, re the regions, in every part of the regions. And it is a, it has been, it's been determined based on probability proportional to size. That means, if you look into Oromia, for instance, 33.5% of the sample goes to that region because their share of the, the, the population in the, in the country is on the same ratio. About 28.5% goes to Amhara region and uh, about 21% to SNLP, 6.1% to Somali region. 5.5% to Tigray region, 3.7% to Addis Ababa, and so forth, depending on the size of the population. You can see the spread of the sample. Afrobarometer is not only in Africa, it's in every nook and cranny of the country as well. I would just
just now give you a brief of how the field work was conducted and how the data was managed as well. That's an important part of it. The methodology we used for collecting the data was electronic data collection. That means using tablets in the field and the server at the University of Cape Town. We, had, we, we used an application known as survey to go which is a robust one. This application allows us real-time monitoring, monitoring of the proper application of the work pattern I showed you earlier using the map. The data management team at the University of Cape Town, together with the data management team at the University of Nairobi, which is the Afrobarometer core partner for East Africa, provide ensure the technical support for ensuring the quality of the data. Internal consistency and reliability of the data were ensured through the state-of-the-art programming and coding. Interviews were basically monitored in real time, thanks to technology. A total of 80 field personnel, 16 supervisors, 64 enumerators were deployed to, 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 to the areas I showed you earlier. Now, a caveat. Ladies and gentlemen, please draw your attention to this caveat. The results of the Afrobarometer surveys are the opinions of ordinary adult citizens who are included in the survey by random selection, that is, by a mere random chance. They, the opinions, are not therefore opinions of the elites, opinions of the politicians, the interest groups, or activists. Of course, unless, of course, as citizens of the country, those elites are randomly selected. The point is, Afrobat Barometer's method of selection is purely random. So it doesn't consider any other variable other than random selection or just a lottery. Let me take you to the survey demographics now. You can see the picture. It's just down in a village in one part of Ethiopia. But the survey demographics speak for themselves, ladies and gentlemen. You can see the Ethiopian population is almost proportionally 50-50, and so is the data. Residents, 21% of Ethiopians live in the urban area, 79% in rural area, and so is the data. The age group, it's quite diverse. We've got from 18 to 35, 59. 36 to 45, 20. Ethiopia is a young country. And so 60% of uh, the people, the young people are uh, interviewed in our sample. Education, all levels. People with no formal education, primary, secondary, post-secondary, and all that. In terms of religion, the sample is as diverse as the Ethiopian people. Christians, 63%, Muslims, 36%, other faiths, 1%. 